Joining me, President of Washington Strategy Group and former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for the Obama Administration, Joel Rubin, and Chief Operating Officer for ETS Risk Management, former FBI Assistant Director for Counterintelligence, and MSNBC National Security Analyst, Frank Figluzzi. Uh, Joel, what's your take on the White House, uh, on how the White House has responded to Khashoggi's death so far? Well, Aaron, uh, this whole episode speaks to the moral rot at the heart, uh, at, at the heart, really, of the Trump foreign policy. And uh, it, it's really astonishing. Uh, there is no moral outrage. There is no uh, explanation about why it is deeply problematic that the Saudis executed an American resident in the heart of a NATO ally in a premeditated fashion and did so with impunity. Uh, this really uh, demonstrates the feebleness right now of our foreign policy, uh, the feebleness of our position in the world. And as the president just said, and as you pointed out, uh, for what? Uh, for money and, and not even for factual numbers of money. Uh, these numbers are inflated, uh, not based in reality, but uh, that's not what should be driving American foreign policy when we have someone of this stature uh, and anyone, frankly, associated uh, with the United States uh, killed in such a manner. We need to be a lot stronger than we currently are. Frank, the president has said that, that he finds Saudi Arabia's explanation credible, which we know contradicts what intelligence agencies here seem to be increasingly convinced about. What do you make of the president's comments so far? Look, this is a, essentially a version of pay to play, meaning foreign policy now based on the ability to pay your way out of a murder. There is no credibility in the concept of bringing 15 people to interview someone. Just as you don't bring a knife to a gunfight, you don't bring a bone saw to an interview. And our intelligence agencies clearly have indications from within and outside the, that consulate in Turkey that that there was high level involvement, instructions, and at the very least we were looking at a possible rendition, essentially a kidnap that went horribly wrong. But the notion that someone died during a physical assault and then suddenly got chopped up into pieces and there just happened to be a forensic uh, coroner or, or uh, medical examiner present for this so-called interview is ludicrous. And the world is going to call the president out on this. Eventually, either Khashoggi's fiance or the Turkish government or some other allied government is going to have electronic intercepts that will call out President Trump as not getting this right. And he needs to understand the risk he's taking in siding with the Saudis. Joe, we've heard from lawmakers on this. Lawmakers have been uh, skeptical of the Saudi government's account of Khashoggi's death as well. We know we heard from Senator Lindsey Graham. We'll put it on the screen here, this tweet from him. Uh, what should we expect to see from Congress on this issue? Well, Aaron, it Frank's right, and, and, and really uh, what President Trump has done is he's handed the ball off for leadership in American foreign policy to Congress. And fortunately, Congress right now is expressing what Americans feel and what the national security, national security community sees, which is uh, that this relationship right now with Saudi Arabia is off kilter. And so Congress can do several things. First, it has already triggered the Magnitsky Act. It's asked for the administration to investigate and we see whether or not human rights violations occurred to then potentially target sanctions against those individuals, but it can do more, and it should do more. It should do investigations primarily into the American-Saudi relationship and the nature of that relationship. What deals were cut behind the scenes? What communications did Jared Kushner have with Mohammed bin Salman that we don't know about? Uh, what kinds of discussions are we engaging with the Saudis in related to Iran, related to Yemen, that have not seen the light of day? A, a Democratic Congress could really lead on that. A Republican Congress is not going to. And Frank, I'll give you the last word on this. What would you expect the role to be of U.S. intelligence, U.S. law enforcement agencies uh, in the, the outcome of this investigation going forward? Well, if this had been done right, and it's never too late to do something right, President Trump would have requested the Saudis, through the visit of, of uh, Mike Pompeo, to allow the FBI in its liaison capacity to ride along and assist with this investigation. President Trump would have received warmly a full briefing from the CIA and NSA as to what they had from human and technical sources. And we would have been getting to the bottom of this, and we would have been accepting our own intelligence agencies. But that's never happened. So we're left with the Saudis investigating themselves, the Crown Prince literally running his own investigation of himself, and the result's going to be quite obvious. It will be a self-serving, face-saving rationale that we're given, that apparently, because we have a promissory note of a wish list to buy some of our aircraft equipment, gets them off the hook for murder. 
That's what should be happening, and that's what unfortunately is happening now. And the American people through their Congress need to demand more. All right, we will leave it there. Gentlemen, uh, Joel Rubin, Frank Figluzzi, thank you both. Thank you.